What's going on everyone? Hunter and Drew back from Misfit HQ today to teach you how to split jerk. This is one of those movements where we can take an athlete from, you know, kind of having a really strong strength base, being able to put a decent amount of weight overhead, teaching them the mechanics, the more of kind of the finer points of the movement, and all of a sudden adding 10, 20, 30 pounds to their lift just because they learned how to move a little bit better. But we're gonna start with the basics. Drew's not even gonna be able to touch a barbell because we need those uh, kind of foundations to make sure that we're in the right positions once we do start to put weight on the bar and get overhead. Quick refresher on the foot position. So Drew's gonna set himself up. Now we are talking about the split jerk, which kind of implies that this is a heavier loading. We're not doing this for reps in a Metcon. Drew's got his feet a little bit wider than his hips, probably somewhere between squat stance and, and kind of like almost a jumping stance. And what I'm gonna do is just help him out, make sure he remembers where his position is. I'm just gonna put a little chalk mark on the ground and this just helps him be able to kind of replicate this movement over and over again. As long as you're able to keep those toes pointed relatively forward and when he goes into the dip, which we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, can you go into that dip, Drew? his feet remain flat on the ground. He's creating that tension by pushing his knees out, but his whole foot stays totally flat. And if you have to toe out just a tiny bit because of your proportions, so be it. If not, we're looking for that kind of straight north-south position. Now, from here, the way that we have athletes kind of find their receiving position for that split jerk is Drew's gonna take one lunge step forward with whichever leg is his front foot. So go ahead and take that one lunge step forward, Drew. Okay, he's got his knee down, and all I'm gonna have him do is come out of that position about 12 inches or so, okay? And we make sure that this position's good. Here we've got that vertical shin. He's got a vertical thigh on this side, his heels flaring out. We can almost think his big toe back here is pointed at his big toe up front. And if he puts his arms straight overhead as if he had a barbell, we can draw a nice straight line from that barbell straight down to his hips. If you have kind of that straight back leg, go ahead and get in that bad position, Drew. This is a really common position we see. We're loading up the low back. When Drew bends his knee in the correct receiving position, we're loading that barbell over the hips. And again, I can just put that chalk mark on that front foot and you can recover, Drew. Front foot, back foot, good. So now he's got kind of a line that he's shooting for, give or take. We've got our kind of starting position. We've got our receiving position. Now we need to talk about the dip. So Drew's gonna put his feet back in the correct spot. And all I'm looking for him to do is sit his butt straight down over his heels and push his knees out. Boom. Now the depth of that dip is gonna depend on kind of what type of athlete you are. Drew's a much more powerful explosive athlete, so his dip's gonna be a little bit shallower and much quicker. Somebody who's a little bit stronger might need a slightly deeper dip uh, to get overhead. So you're gonna have to learn that for yourself as the athlete. Again, his torso is nice and upright, and if he were to put his invisible barbell in his front rack, again, we've got a nice straight line from shoulder to hip. And from here, we're just looking to pop that hip through, stand tall, great. And what I would have any athlete do, or what you could do, is practice that dip with a pause. So dip, make sure we're nice and vertical, jump, great. We can do that a couple times. Once he's made sure that he can execute that dip perfectly, then we're gonna have him move the feet. So I'm looking for that dip, the jump, that nice hip extension to make sure that we're actually transferring uh, force from the hip into that barbell. And then hopefully he lands uh, in kind of the right spot. So in that position, I can just say jerk, he's gonna dip and split. Great. Recover, front foot, back foot. Let's do that one more time. Pay attention to that nice vertical dip. And then he's also landing with that bar straight over his hips. Go. Great, front shin's vertical, back thigh is vertical, and he's good to go. Great, so once we have kind of that footwork, the footwork's probably the most important thing that you can do to get right, especially in your warm up. Don't even touch that barbell until you're confident that your dip is sound, your receiving position is solid, and that footwork is dialed in, then you can get the barbell. That's, how, that's where that lift is made or missed. So Drew's now ready, he can grab that barbell. Let's talk about your hand position. So. Ideally, the width on that bar is the same width that you would clean, because typically you're gonna, you know, in, in competition or in some sort of event, we're probably getting the bar out of a clean position or out of the rack. So Drew pops that thing up into his front rack. We're looking for the elbows to be just slightly in front of the bar. 
This is going to help make sure that when he dips forward, if his elbows were way back here and he goes to dip, that bar is going to slide down his chest. So barbell's resting above the collarbone and he's kind of sh almost shrugging up into that bar, kind of creating a muscle shelf for that thing to sit around. If you want, you can film yourself. This is an easy thing to do. We want to make that W shape. So Drew's got his hand outside of his elbow and his elbow outside of his shoulder and we kind of create that W shape. That's ensuring that that bar is resting in the right spot, but also that his upper back is tight and providing some support for that bar, okay? All I'm gonna have him do now is just dip and stand. So now that we've got a little bit of load, we wanna make sure that that added load doesn't pull him forward as he dips. So just dip, great. We still got that nice straight line, shoulder to hip and stand. Dip and stand, good. And then just for kind of good measure, I'm gonna have him Find his receiving position right now with that bar in the front rack, Drew. Yep, receiving position. You can push that bar up overhead. And that's an easy way, kind of without the dynamic element, to make sure we've got that barbell right over the shoulder, right over the hip, and then he can recover. So he already has a feel for what that landing position should look like. Now that we've got basically all the components dialed together, we're looking to kind of put it all together. One of the best ways that you can do this, especially in warm-up reps or when you're learning, is with pauses. So a lot of times I'll have athletes pause in the dip. Go ahead and pause there, great. And then when Drew receives the bar in the landing position, he's gonna freeze again, okay? This ensures that he likes his position, he's stable, he's not wobbling around, and then he can recover front foot, back foot. And then as we get more comfortable, more competent with the lift, we can cut out pauses. So no pause in the dip, but I still want you to pause in the receiving position. Go. Good, recover. And then finally, once he's demonstrated competence in that portion, we can perform the full jerk, pausing only as long as he needs to before he recovers and brings that bar back down to his shoulders. When we're either learning the split jerk, maybe you have split jerk but you haven't been taught formally you're kind of trying to retool this lift because you know you've got more in the tank than what you've actually put up uh kind of you know in any sort of training or testing environment start with the basics start with that footwork maybe make sure that those that foot position is dialed in make sure that your receiving position probably the most commonly incorrect position we see athletes in make sure that's dialed in and then use the pause work use the pause and the dip use the pause in the receiving position make sure that you're practicing all of those positions because ultimately success in the split jerk is mostly dependent on your skill with the lift far less about the strength if you like what you see make sure you head to our youtube channel scroll through those tip videos let us know in the comments if you want to see something else we'll see you in the next one